Spice Man. That's right. We add it up, multiply it, man. Spice Man. Oh, yes. A couple things we're gonna learn today. Spice Man. All right. Take some time, educate yourself. Spice Man. That's right. You won't believe it's just math. Come on. Hi, I'm Ruth Dutton. Hi, I'm Aaron Williams. Hi, I'm Brandon Alexander. Hi, I'm Kelvin Dutton. Hello, I'm Lyndon Sincere. We are your Spice Math Tutors. You won't believe it's just math, just math. Hey everyone, welcome back to Spice Math. Today's episode will be the fourth and final installment in the Discovering a Calculator series for now. In today's session, we'll be doing some practice and some exercises using our calculators. We'll be putting everything that we've learned so far into practice. In today's lesson, we'll be looking at four questions. The first question, find the mean of the numbers 20, 38, 45, 51, 63, 76, 89, and 98. In order to find the mean of this set of numbers, we must first find the sum of these numbers, then divide this sum by the number of values in the set of numbers. The easiest or the quickest way to do such a thing in this scenario would be to use the fraction function on your calculator. So, first we'll identify and press our fraction button on my calculator, it's this button here, so I'll select that button. Following this, I would enter the values in the question in the numerator or on top the fraction separated by addition signs. So our values are 20, then we place an addition sign followed by 38, addition sign 45, addition sign, 51, addition sign, 63, addition sign, 76, plus 89, plus 98. Now, you'll notice that on my calculator, you cannot see the entire numerator, and that's not a problem. All you have to do is use your arrows to navigate. And if you'll notice as well, I made a slight error in adding more than one addition sign. However, this could simply be solved by going to the area where you want to remove the addition sign or remove anything and pressing the delete button to remove it. That was a good opportunity to show you how to use that function, just in case you make a mistake while entering your data. So following this, we would, as you saw me do, we would move our cursor or our, that blinking line down to the denominator, and we now enter the number of values. And in this case, we have eight values in the question. So we would enter the number eight. And once you've checked over and you've ensured that all of the values have been entered correctly, then all that's left to do is hit the equal sign, and this would return a value of 60. So that means that the mean or the average of the set of numbers in the question has a value of 60. Now, there's an alternative method to complete this question. So let's say you cannot identify a fraction button on your calculator. Doing the following would have the same effect. You can simply insert an open bracket, and once this is done, enter all of the values in the question, separated by addition sign. So 20, again, plus 38, plus 45, plus 51, plus 63, plus 76, plus 89, plus 98. Now that you've done this, you have to complete the bracket by closing the bracket. So just to show, just make sure everybody's on the same page as me. So the first thing we did, we put an open bracket and we then placed all of our, all the values in the question in the bracket separated by addition signs. Now we must close this bracket. The next step will be to hit the division sign and enter the number of values in the question. 
And in this question, we had eight values, therefore that number would be eight. Now, just to show how this is basically the same thing as a fraction. Now, when you have a fraction, this is simply the numerator divided by the denominator. So in this case, it's the same thing. However, if you recall from the first session on, in the Discovering Your Calculator series, we have to insert brackets in order to ensure that the operations are done in the right order. So if we press the equal sign now, it will return the same answer of 60. So this is two different methods to solve the same question using our calculator. Question two. If A is equal to 1.62, B is equal to 9.87, and C is equal to 5.62, evaluate AB plus BC minus AC. So the first step in solving such a question would be to identify how you would enter such a set of operations into the calculator. In this question, the rules of board mass or bomb das stipulate that the multiplications take place first, followed by the additions and subtractions. Also, I want you to note that when there is no sign between two adjacent terms or two terms that are next to each other, it implies or it means that there's a multiplication taking place. To enter this, we would have to put a times B in a bracket in the place of AB plus B times C in a bracket in the place of BC minus A times C in a bracket in the place of AC. So in order to actually evaluate this question, we must substitute the numbers in for the letters, meaning that we must swap all the letters for the numbers which they are equal to. So to be carried out as follows. First, we place an open bracket and put our value for A, 1.62, multiplied by our value for B, 9.87. And we then close the bracket. So this piece of our entry would cover the value for A, B. Because as you see here, it is the value of A multiplied by the value of B. The next part of the expression has an addition sign, so we place our addition sign. The next part is BC. In order to enter that, we place the value of B, which is 9.87. We put a multiplication sign, and then we enter the value for C, which is 5.62. So this section would cover the BC part of the equation because it is the value of B multiplied by the value of C. Next, we will put a, a subtraction sign followed by an open bracket. And in this bracket, we will have A, which is 1.62, multiplied by C, which is... 5.62. Now, once the bracket is closed, all that's left to do now is to press the equal sign. And once we do this, the calculator will return an answer of 62.3544, which is the correct answer to this question. So if we were to evaluate AB plus BC minus AC, with A being 1.62, B being 9.87 and C being 5.62, our answer would be 62.3544. Question 3. Evaluate the cube root of negative 5 squared plus 10 squared. So here our knowledge of roots and powers will come into play. The first step in this calculation will be to place the cube root sign. So in one of our episodes, we talked about roots and powers and we identified our cube root sign. So on my calculator, I have to use the second function to access it. So I'll press shift and press the button with the cube root sign above it. And remember, a cube root 
looks like a square root, but in the place of the 2, there's a 3. So this is our cube root sign. Once this is done, the next step will be to enter what's under the cube root sign. Now we must do this carefully for this question, considering where the brackets must be placed. Because if you recall from the same episode with powers and roots, when we are putting negative numbers to a certain power, then we must place the negative sign associated with the number inside the bracket. So after the cube root is placed, the open bracket button must be pressed. Following this, we would enter negative 5 and we would close our bracket. Now this is important because negative 5 is being squared, not just 5 and keeping the negative sign in front of it. Once this is done, we place a square on the entire bracket here. And in order to do this, we must ensure that the blinking line, or the I guess we'd call it a cursor, is outside of this bracket. Because the entire bracket is being squared, not just the 5. So we don't want to see this. Just to be clear, we don't want to see this because this would return an incorrect answer for this situation. What we want to see is an open bracket. We enter our value negative 5, we close the bracket, and we put it to the power of 2. Following this, ensuring that the cursor is not in the power, but is on the same line as the normal pieces of the equation, we enter an addition sign, followed by the next part that is under the bracket, 10 squared. Now it is important that we check through this entire expression because we have to ensure that both negative 5 squared and 10 squared are under the cube root sign. So once you've ensured that this is the case, all we have to do is press our equal sign and we, the calculator will return 5. Now the reason the calculator would return 5 is because negative 5 squared is equal to 25 and 10 squared is equal to 100. So once we add 25, which would be the value here, to 100, which would be the value here, we'll end up with 125 under the cube root, right? So everything under the cube root would give us a value of 125. Now, to evaluate this expression, all that is left to do is to find the cube root of 125, which is in this case 5, because 5 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 5 is 125. Question 4. So if you take a look at your screen, you will see there's a diagram of a triangle. This triangle has sides K, another side that is 9.46 centimeters, and one that is 12 centimeters. Here we will talk a bit about trigonometry. In this particular triangle, the side K is considered the opposite because it is opposite the angle in question X, the angle X. The side that has a length of 9.46 cm is considered the adjacent because it is adjacent or next to the angle X. The side that has a length of 12 cm is considered to be the hypotenuse. And what this means is that it's the line that is opposite the right angle. Our objective in this question is to find the value of X. In such a question, we would apply the formulas involved in trigonometry for right angle triangles. The formulas are as follows. Sine x is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cos x is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan x is equal to opposite over adjacent. A nifty little way to remember this is SOHCAHTOA. S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. And this can be used to remember the three trigonometric ratios involved with right angle triangles. So, meaning sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Ka, meaning cos is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And toa, 
meaning that tan is equal to opposite over adjacent. So as I said, in this question, our objective will be to find x. That's the angle in question indicated in the diagram. This will require us to apply a formula, one of the trigonometric ratios that I just mentioned, and our knowledge of inverse trigonometric ratios. First step will be to identify which formula is appropriate to use. In this case, the information we have is the length of the adjacent and the length of the hypotenuse. So we look for the formula which involves the adjacent and the hypotenuse. And we can come to the conclusion that cos is a trigonometric ratio that we have to use because it involves the adjacent and the hypotenuse. So the next step would be to work out the right hand side of the formula. In order to do this, we simply divide 9.46 by 12. Or, alternatively, if we wanted to arrive at the same answer, we could have used our fraction function, entered 9.46 as our numerator, move down to below, to the denominator, and enter 12, as, as it's stated in the formula, because the formula is cos x is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And here, our adjacent, 9.46, is over our hypotenuse of 12 cm. And this would give us 473 over 600. Here, we can apply a trick that we learned in one of our videos. And that is to use the fraction to decimal function, which is represented as S to D or F to D. Here we see that when we work out the right-hand side of the equation, we will get 0 0.7883 recurring, with the 3 being the value that's recurring. But if we take it to four decimal places, we will get that the right-hand side is equal to 0 0.7883. Now, to solve the question, now we want to find x. What we have to do is apply our knowledge of inverse trig ratios. So, if you recall from the last few lessons, if cos x is equal to 0 0.7883, then x is equal to cos inverse of 0 0.7883. So to, en to enter this into our calculator, we clear what we have here. And here we could either use the answer function or we could note our value in order to reuse it in this part of the working. So we know that x is equal to cos inverse of 0 0.7883 to four decimal places. So I access cos inverse by pressing the shift button and identifying the button with cos inverse over it. And that's the cos button on my calculator. So once I've done that, you'll see I have the cos inverse function here. I would now enter the value of the right hand side of the equation because x would be equal to the cos inverse of the right hand side, which is 0. 7883 to four decimal places. And once I hit my equal sign, it will return a value of 37.973 to three decimal places. Or we could have utilized our answer function here. So we could have completed the right hand side by entering 9.46 divided by 12. And once this was done, we know that x would be equal to cos inverse of this value. So we could have simply cleared the calculator and entered cos inverse of our answer because the value of 0 0.7883333 recurring would be stored in the answer. So once you enter this, it will be equal to 37.97 degrees to two decimal places. Now, this is a more accurate way of coming to your answer because the more decimal places involved, the more accurate your answer would be. So students, this brings us to the end of the Discovering Your Calculator series. 
but this doesn't mean it should be the end of your practice. Take some time to explore the functions and features of your calculator. Also, don't be afraid to use the internet as a resource to further learn about your calculator. So, keep practicing and we'll see you on the next episode of Spice Math.